you a new one, chump. Oh yeah, here we go. This is the shit right here. An oddball shooter from 1998 with insane ambition, kick-ass gameplay, and a highly questionable story? Today, I give you Sin, Ritual Entertainment's contribution to 90s cheese and ultraviolence. You may not remember this game because it got a little overshadowed by this other game that came out like a week later, this one, which, to be fair, is a much better game. But Sin holds a special place in my heart for being a champion of the lost genre of dick swinging action games. Get ready for this. You are John Blade. John Blade is an officer of hardcore. No, guys, come on. Come on back now. Don't. Come on. He has a hacker partner named JC and... Oh, God. Okay, this is a thing that needs to be addressed immediately. This game was made on the Quake 2 engine, which was made by time-traveling space wizard John Carmack. But they were a little behind the curve on this one because instead of having skeletons for the models, they, uh, didn't. And so everything is moved by vertices. And it's not as noticeable 20 years ago in garbage resolution. But now, uh, it's, uh... Just get used to it, kids, because the whole game is like this. Just look at his hair. This is supposed to be dreadlocks. Anyway, let's talk about why this is a forgotten classic that could have been a trend center for FPS games if Half-Life didn't show up a week later to have crazy shit like characters' mouths moving when they talked and voice acting that wasn't terrible. And look, I know I talk about Half-Life a lot on this channel, and there's a reason for that, because talking about FPS games from the 90s and not mentioning it is like talking about geopolitical tensions in Europe during the 30s without talking about Nazis. So let's talk about how Half-Life systematically exterminated this kind of shooter. Half-Life, and by extension, Half-Life 2, made shooters go linear, where you have a start point and you basically go straight line from set piece to set piece. It's a much easier way to design a game because you have so much control over the player's resources. In a game like Sin, there's secrets all over the place. You can get weapons early, there are health pickups and secrets, armor, shit like that. And in Sin and the shooters that came before it, levels were open-ended and allowed the player to visit a lot of areas in any particular order. Sin takes this idea and builds upon it, like here, in the very first level, there's a bank heist. Freeport City Bank was just taken over. Robbery in progress. Damn. Damn. And you're sent in on a helicopter, and I think this is the first time I've ever seen a game open with a turret section, but it's actually not bad. Look, look how it's introduced. <laughs> That was a good shot. That's nothing compared with last week. I shot this cop in the head. He never even saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those rent-a-cop guys are whipped. Hey, what's that sound? Surprise! Not so fast, chump. And then you'll see you have actual mission objectives. And if you keep your eyes and ears open, you can do all of them without a problem. So you shoot up the rooftops of this bank, take out these bad guys with their rocket launchers, seal off the bank entrance, blow a hole in the roof to enter, and drop right in. Simple stuff, right? Not in 1998. This was an evolution of the kind of interactivity you saw in games like Duke Nukem 3D, where your actions could actually shape the environment around you. So you get into the bank, what now? Rescue some hostages, kill the criminals, but wait, there's another entrance over here you can help out your fellow officers control the situation on that side of the bank before going inside, saving hostages. Get out of here! Woohoo, I'm saved! Run to safety! Thank you, officer. You can kill civilians, but JC will yell at you. Wait, what are you doing, man? Those are friendlies! There's really not much in the way of punishment for doing it, and I actually had to do it once because the fucker was blocking a secret. What, are you blind? I needed that ammo. Blade and JC talk a lot sometimes, and you'll wish they didn't. Or you'll wish JC didn't. Blade wishes JC didn't. Jackpot! Uh-huh. Woohoo! It's a fire sale! Everything must blow! Uh-huh. Jackpot! It's a box full of fucking rats, JC, you asshole! I'm kicking your ass later, JC. You do realize that, right? Rats aren't the toughest enemies in the game, but they are the second worst. You rarely notice them until they're chewing on you, which they do, just because every single one always. Fuck them. You have a lot of standard FPS stuff here. You pick up keys to unlock doors. In the second mission, when you're chasing this army of bank robbers down, you pick up sacks of money lying around to return it to the bank, because you're actually a good guy. Alright! FCB is gonna be happy that you recover that! Here's where shit starts getting a little crazy. 
I got some bad news. Blade is tracking us. I, I, I tried to lose him, but he's like one of your mutant blood. Oh. My men are keeping him busy, but we better get out of here now. Incompetent slug. Oh yeah, there we go. You might have seen her somewhere before. That's the villainess of this little story, Alexis Sinclair, head of Syntech and future back surgery patient. Seriously, this woman makes Jessica Rabbit look modest. And in the promotional material loading screen, she looks like this. But in the in-game cutscenes, yeah, Jesus Christ. I know the technology was primitive. I'll give her this, she doesn't have Lara Croft's jagged pyramid boobs. If you think I'm objectifying this character or denying her a more serious and nuanced discussion that involves gender roles and portrayals of women in video games, you're probably taking this game way too seriously and should stop. If your complaint is that Alexis Sinclair is a bad depiction of women, well, she's the villain and she looks like a creepy sex doll. And if that's not feminist, I don't know what is. So she's an evil genocidal maniac who wants to turn the whole world into mutants using this drug U4? And that's it. After she turns the guy behind the bank heist into a mutant monster, you get on her trail. The compound is called diforcinide. Now, the manufacturer is, <laughs> are you ready for this? Syntech. Who would have thought a babe like Alexis would be behind all this? Shit. Hot piece like that and she's into this. Well, damn. Damn. No way. I've got to get down to Syntech Chemical and check this out. Once you find out that she's behind this scheme, you go undercover in a forced stealth mission, and I think this is the first time I ever saw a forced stealth mission in an FPS game, so fuck you, Sen. Fuck you. I've played it a thousand times by now, so I could get to all the fun shooting parts of the game, but it's just crouching and avoiding alarms, because alarms in this game mean that Syntex soldiers will just spawn in out of nowhere forever. <laughs> Along the way, you get your standard FPS weapons, your pistol, shotgun, light machine gun, heavy machine gun, weird spider bomb things that are useful sometimes, grenade launcher, rocket launcher, energy weapon, other energy weapon, and sniper rifle. They're all pretty good. One problem is that all the bullets have these tracers, but they're hit scan weapons. And at first, you might be a little confused because these things here aren't your bullets. Your bullets are already here, not here. The shotgun is a beast. It will jib almost anything if used properly. The heavy machine gun, which also has an attached grenade launcher, is also pretty cool, even if it takes way too long to switch modes. The sniper rifle is so powerful that it even surprises Blade. Holy shit! Then there's this energy weapon that I barely got to use because you have to collect three pieces of it before you can use it, and I got the third piece right before the game took my weapons away. Brad, man, it looks like some kind of energy weapon. Time to make some Syntec toast. Where's my butter? Where is it? You get it back for the final boss fight, and it's okay, I guess. You'll get a lot more use out of the rocket launcher. There's plenty of ammo for that. Killing more bad guys, using actual in-game terminals to shut down security systems, and oh yeah, did I mention that this game in 1998 had a pretty neat location-based damage system that registered limb and headshots? Rock and roll! Oh! weakest enemies could go down with a single headshot, the fact that it worked at all is a marvel. Even the armor system where you can have vital head protection and torso armor and up to a hundred pants, they get chipped away realistically by the enemies. They're not all generic soldiers, just mostly generic soldiers. There's various flavors of robots, mutants, and oh my god, Alexis made a little baby mutant she keeps in her house? That is adorable! While not all of Sin is great, it has a lot of standout areas. The first few missions are awesome, after that shitty force stealth section, you go through a pretty cool chemical plant, a warehouse, a biomech lab. Depending on how you play and where you explore, you can find branching paths that take you to other missions that you would otherwise never see. There's a sewer level too, but it's not too bad. The ambitious design in a lot of sections looks pretty quaint by today's standards. In 1998 though, this is impressive stuff. Circling around this oil rig, sniping security before you get on, sneaking around to disable security systems, whole buildings blowing up and falling. This rising lava on this apparently volcanic island, and a deep sea section that's actually good and looks fucking amazing for the time. Like most old FPS games, this one gets pretty brutal. Not cheap brutal like certain other games I could mention. <laughs> but once snipers are introduced, get ready to use them quick saves. <laughs> 
Hey, save scumming is fine. It's not about how much you save, it's about how much you load. Wait! Wait! A thing that struck me while I was playing this is that in new school FPS games, you have this thing where you get a prompt on screen telling you where an enemy is throwing a grenade so you can get out of the way. I was reminded of this when I was in a room with like five assholes all shooting grenades at me at the same time. This is what it used to be like, kids. This shit puts hair on your chest and makes your balls drop. One grenade? Is that a fucking joke? This is an accurate representation of what that shit would look like in Sin. Blade. Blade. However, in one of these later missions, it's full of snipers. This is Jungle Pass, the beginning of the game's final gauntlet of challenges. Wait, hold on, listen to this music. It doesn't really fit, but damn is that funky. Mm. You see this ATV here? You can ride this. You don't want to, it's a trap. You need it, as far as I can tell, only once to get past this gap in the road. The way this thing controls is fucking pants. The mouse turning is seriously delayed and the keyboard turning is so sensitive that just tapping it probably gets you about 45 degrees. And since these guys can blow it up with three rockets, it's best not to even use it. Vehicles in an FPS game in 1998 is very ambitious, but it wasn't time yet. Here we are, Alexis Sinclair's secret island mansion. Nice place, lots of security, snipers everywhere, but here's an example of why this game isn't cheap and shitty about it. You can sneak around, you can find alternate routes, if you're smart about it, you can turn off the security system, you can waste the snipers before they even see you coming. It's an option if you're willing to work for it. The worst, most dangerous enemies in this game are the doors. The fucking doors. I don't know why this was an issue in older games, be it in this game or the deadly doors in build engine games, but this is fucking inexcusable. Some doors hurt you a little, some doors are instantly fatal. It's bullshit. Whoa! This isn't gonna be one of those videos where I painstakingly go through the whole game to show you what's in there. It's a pretty good game if you can get past the terrible, terrible cutscenes with a lot of fun shooting and clever level design, lots to explore and interact with. There's a level of care put into the design that you just don't see anymore. Think about the last time you walked around in an FPS game and you could just turn the faucets on and off or flush the toilets. It's little interactive world building stuff like that that we abandoned in the rush to make everything bland. You get some decent bosses in this game, except this one who is glitched to fuck. Even the final boss is pretty good, but I'm going to show you the cutscene you get when you kill the final boss because you shouldn't play this game for the story. I want to share this with you because even when I first played this game many years ago, it was the stupidest ending to a video game I'd ever seen. To the game's credit, and even though this is in 320 by 200 resolution, this animation is solid, but the rest of it is, uh... <laughs> You've been a very naughty boy, Blade. Bad enough to kill you, bitch. Shoot what should I do with you, Blade? Perhaps I'll lobotomize you and keep you as a pet. After all the shit you put me through, you're crazy to think you're gonna walk out of here alive. So just kill her. Don't you know if you shoot me, you'll never ever learn your lesson. I think his lesson is that he needs to fucking shoot you. Lesson one, how to shoot the villain without letting them gloat at you and buy time to escape, you stupid fucking slab of cured asshole! You know, when I have the controls, motherfuckers die. You give me the gun, John, I'll pine box the plastic bitch. Now pay attention, because I have something very special to show you. <laughs> Save it for someone who cares, winch. But John, I'm willing to bet my life you've never seen anything like this before. I'm going to assume that this means that John R. Blade, hardcore badass, has never seen a snatch before. Or maybe he's only seen one, and he thinks hers is going to be special, but fuck man, even if it is, it's probably weird mutant shit that I personally refuse to render with Photoshop. Watch. I don't... Uh... This! Oh, hell. Wait, you hadn't even pulled the hammer back? Are you fucking kidding me, Blade? I hope they bust you down to traffic duty, you... Fuck. Oh, what the? Uh, did I? I mean, is she? Wait a minute. Here we go. 
I'm tracking four outbound targets from your location. Oh, no! What the? The targets have vanished. The radar's clear. She's gone, Blade. She's gone. No way! Your crazy bitch got away. I can't believe it. She got away. No! There you have it, a game I actually enjoy, despite some wonky graphics and an awful story. You got really solid gunplay, a fairly likable badass protagonist, and it leaves the door open for a sequel. Too bad Half-Life came along and ate the game's lunch, blew it completely out of the water, and there was no chance you'd get a sequel. Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot this thing was here. Yeah? Oh, bullshit. No, I, I think I would have heard about that. Well, oh god, oh god. Well, uh, looks like old Sylvie was wrong on that one. There is a sequel. Only took him eight years, but they, uh, oh, okay. Somebody give me a bag or something. I'm having some kind of attack. Load me up with some sleep juice. I just got a really bad feeling about this.